Hi, I'm Graham Glick, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching, Learning Plus Technology at Stony Brook University, and this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches and best practices in teaching and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this episode, I'm joined by Norman Goodman, a professor of sociology and a distinguished teaching professor within SUNY. Norm, welcome to the show. Thank you, Graham. Pleasure to be here. So we're going to discuss the importance of the syllabus in teaching. Can you tell us why that document is so important? Well, I see the syllabus as a kind of contract between the instructor and the students uh, to try to make absolutely clear what this course is about, what's required of them, and what's required of me. Okay. And the courses that you teach are? The two courses I teach relatively frequently are Intimate Relationships, which is a course listed between sociology and women's studies, and Social Psychology, which we th I teach from a sociologically oriented perspective. Okay. So what should be in a syllabus? There are a number of elements that need in the syllabus. First, just contact information, who I am, where I reside, my phone number, my email address, my office hours, and in the classes which, are, which have teaching assistance, same information for them. They need to know what the objectives of the course are. Uh, they need to know, for example, um, what I'm intending to do for the course, what the required books are, what the assessment procedure will be, if there are exams, what kind of exams, how many, uh, how they're counted. Uh, I also include in my syllabi uh, a, uh, since I have a requirement of a one-page paper that they do about the third week in the semester to provide some help to those who need some help in writing, for sending over to the writing center. That's in there too. Uh, but then also I have a section which lays out very clearly what I expect of them in during the course and what they can expect of me. And following that, in addition to the three required elements of the syllabus that the university provides uh, for disability support services and so forth, uh, there is a syllabus which describes the dates, the topics for those dates, the readings for those dates, mm -hmm. and then when any exams are scheduled. So that, those to me the debate. Oh, in, in, and in my syllabi, I included the last page a complete description of how I actually grade the course so students can trace along their progress as they go along. Okay. How do you, one of the issues uh, I've always had with syllabi is that the students will, especially if you're reading them to them, they're very aware of them at the beginning of the semester. But then they tend to disappear into file folders and they're not consulted throughout the rest of the semester. How do you combat that? How do you make them that they're a living part of the course? To a large, large extent, by referring to them throughout the semester because there are relevant issues that come up during the course to which referring back to the syllabus becomes useful. Okay. And I do that. It's also on Blackboard, so I can refer to it at Blackboard. Uh, before Blackboard, students used to come up to me during the course semester, I've lost my syllabus, can I have a new one? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to do that now. And occasionally I'll make announcements which refer them to items on the syllabus. So again, m reinforcing the importance of the syllabus for them. Okay. If a new instructor came up to you, and said, what's the most important piece of advice that you could give me? What would that be? Like working with students. Like working with students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. treat, them, treat them as adults, uh -huh. not as children. Okay. Uh, and enjoy doing it. So and, mutual and respect. Re respect and enjoy what you're doing. That is, enjoy the substance of your courses and enjoy the process of teaching. How about learning objectives? Learning objectives are relatif relatively new, and that is, I would say, in the last 20, 30 years. Okay. And what impact do you think it's had introducing learning objectives on, into syllabi? It helps focus the students on what I'm interested in and what they're going to be taking up during the course of the semester. Okay. Before they had to, I assume, infer it from what we did in class, now I give them, a, there's a kind of structure that allows them to see in advance where we're heading. What about the impact on you as an instructor? Has it, has it helped you to focus your course? Yes, because 
I, I look at this, what I'm going to teach in light of the learning objectives I lay out in the beginning. Okay. So I'd like to explore this, this question a little bit further about to what depth okay. the, the learning objectives should be written. And I'm actually going to ask the audience to think about this, and we're going to bring on our second guest uh, to add to this conversation. So we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you.